Hey, I'm Sydney. Hey, what's up? I'm Max. Are you looking at the video? Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us today. I just have a couple questions to ask y'all. How did you meet and did you ever think you would date each other being in different races? Um, Max and I met eight years ago um, at church and um, I remember not thinking anything about Max's race in uh, the beginning when I met him and when I started liking him. I remember sitting and telling my best friend, you know, hey, do you remember a guy named Max? And, you know, saying that I was starting to like him, but uh, race never, never crossed my mind. Same here. I just we met on choir tour and, you know, from then we had, you know, mutual interests in sports and and then we come to find out we work together and from there it just kind of bud into a relationship so what did family and friends say when they found out y'all were dating someone outside of your race <laughs> my, my parents said good luck um not on the on the grounds of of race by any means it was just that we met eight years ago and i was going into my freshman year of college and and you know, my father especially was just saying, you know, do you want to get into a relationship before you go into your your new adventure into college? And my mom was just head over heels for Sydney because she just loved her. But so I mean, that was that was the only thing. Just good luck. Okay. It is proven to be true that anyone over the age of 65 is less likely to approve of interracial relationships. Has this been the case for you? Um. I believe it depends on the person and uh, depends on their viewpoint on it. I know I can speak from personal experience um, on, you know, one set of grandparents on my side that were not okay with an interracial relationship and they feel as if it would be a lot harder than a relationship that is of the same race, um, but that being their opinion, if you flip it on the other side, um, his grandmother, you know, has absolutely no problem with it, and my grandmother on the other side of the family has absolutely no problem with it, um, all of them being over 65 years of age, and I think, you know, it just depends on your mindset and your beliefs on a relationship in general. The child of dual heritage is not likely to have equal exposure to both of their cultural heritage. How do you plan on raising your children? Do you plan to mix the different cultures evenly, or do you plan on letting your children decide on choosing which culture they feel fit best in? Um, again, I think that uh, that is the that is something that that is a privilege of, that a kid is going to have to go through by being raised in a two-parent home versus a one-parent home. So, I mean, that's. I would like to take the race out of it and I think that, you know, when that time comes that Sydney and I, you know, we're going to be kind of outside of our kids' culture because, I mean, at that point, you know, we'll be older and I think, you know, in 2020-something or 30-something that, you know, it will be an established culture of our kids' generation. So, you know, from then, you know, we'll, we'll incorporate both of our both of our families um, upbringing. Mm -hmm. okay. Interracial marriages have a 41% chance of separating after 10 years together, while there is a 31% chance of separation among same race couples. Knowing these statistics, what do you think the cause of the separation is? Do you think it has to do with race or other factors? I don't personally believe that it has to do with race. I think every relationship has issues. If race is an issue in your relationship, um, then obviously that could be a factor. But the fact that interracial relationships have a higher percentage than the average marriage um, in the divorce rate, I don't personally believe has. I think it's just a statistic. I don't believe that it necessarily has to do with race in that entire percentage. <coughs> Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. It's a
a lot easier for people to meet new people now. That's why the divorce plea. That's why I'm biased towards <laughs> Facebook. Just throwing it out there for a little funny time. <laughs> I'm not being serious. Okay. Um, there are many scholars who have researched economic class and in interracial couples. To statistically, interracial couples marry outside of their social class. Status exchange theory argues that black versus white unions are frequently formed through an exchange relationship in which both white and black partners benefit by trading status characteristics. Is this true in your case? Do you think that has to do with geographical location, common interest, or simply because y'all were attracted to one another? I'm gonna like personally say that that is true. I believe that our families do come from different social classes, mine being the latter, but I also do not agree with that theory in, I understand that it had to come from somewhere, but I don't necessarily like that theory in the way how it's stated. Um, and once again, this is all just my personal preference, but just, it, I think it is insinuating that white, in, in most instances, the male is black and the the woman is white um, and in that case I believe that it's, it's insinuating that white women feel like they have to bring up or you know feel like they have to feel sorry for black men and black men feel like getting with a white woman is going to necessarily raise their status or raise their clout in some type of way so I don't I don't necessarily agree with that because I feel like we are even kilters no matter what you know uh, status was before we got together. Yeah. Okay, 96% of African Americans are okay with interracial marriages compared to 84% of whites, according to the latest census data. Max, is this true with your family? Are they okay with you being in a relationship with Sydney? Yeah, yeah, from day one. They, you know, as long as the, you know, the girl was right and she had a good head on the shoulders, and yeah, they, they loved her. Okay. In the U.S., 87% approve of black and white marriages versus 4% in 1958. Do you feel like most people in your life approve of your relationship? Are there people who have not agreed with and have voiced their opinion? How have you dealt with this? I believe that the 4% in 1958 when you said there was only 4% that were okay with interracial relationships. I think that the, the norm for that day was people just going along with what other people were saying. People weren't necessarily thinking for themselves because in my opinion, if you truly are thinking things through and thinking about just a race in general, humans in general, you know, no matter if you're black, white, Indian, Hispanic, no matter what you are, we are all the same. Each race looks different in and of themselves. I don't look like every other white girl. He doesn't look like every other black man. So the fact that the percentage has so drastically changed, I believe is because people actually realized I'm not even thinking for myself because if you think about it, how ridiculous is it to think that you wouldn't like somebody just simply because of what they look like. I can get not liking somebody because of their viewpoints or because, you know, you don't like what they stand for, but just strictly off of something on the outside that they cannot change, I think it, I think the percentages jump because people realized how absurd that actually was. Now granted, on the flip side of that question, I believe that in our lives personally, there are plenty of people who will be against us, but because they know Sydney and I was some type of, you know, exception to the rule, but, you know, it's, it's fine as long as it's for our life, but they wouldn't want that incorporated in their personal lives. And, you know, that honesty, it is a very rare commodity that we find the honesty of somebody just saying, you know what, I'm, I'm not for it either way. Or, you know, if you like it, I love it. That type of thing. We don't, we don't get that too much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's life. Right. Because of different races have different social norms and social languages, was that difficult to adjust to? Are there still things that confuse you about African-American culture 
are you relatively familiar with their social norms? I think that people stereotype races in the sense of, you know, their culture is so different from my culture. And I'm not speaking for everybody because I know some people do things a lot differently. But for me personally, my culture is not that different from Max's culture. Yes, there are certain things, you know, that each family does differently. But for me personally, there is not some huge cultural difference in myself and Max. And I think Sydney and I are both are very cultured people. You know, we bring diversity that comes across each black table or white table, you know, that helps us, you know, get along a lot better with each other, not necessarily just with other black people or other white people. Like, we're, I think we're cultured across the board as we're well around the people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what would your advice be to a couple who's thinking or just entered into an interracial relationship? Um, like I, I, I would have to say patience. Uh, like I said, me personally coming from my background, I have, I deal, you know, with a family that has coming, has had to deal with addictions growing up. And I know for Sydney personally, she comes with a family that has a special needs, um, person and that, that is all love in the same. And, you know, those are blocks that nobody necessarily asks for but that's just the hand that you got dealt so you know if you if you're choosing to necessarily pursue and you see yourself you know falling a lot deeper into the level of from like to love and a lifetime commitment then you need to understand that patience is going to come with that and a different type of patience is going to come with that especially being in the south but if you want it you know it's there for it. um i guess my advice would be that Whoever you're attracted to, whoever you find yourself liking, or whoever you find yourself loving is just that you let that be that. You don't let other people's mindset or their viewpoint come into play on stereotypes or their opinion that, you know, whether you like somebody of the same race or the different race, you let that just be that. You like them for them and let that be what drives you. Let, let that be your opinion on it and not let, you know, well, so-and-so says that it's going to be harder, this, that. You just, you like who you like. And if you fall in love, great. And, you know, you just take it day by day and just realize that, you know, this is life and, you know, go with it. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm Justin. We've been in a relationship for a year. Okay, thanks you guys for joining me. I'm just going to ask you a couple questions. So, um, the, first, the first one is, how did y'all meet, and did you ever think you would date each other being in a different race? Um, we met vending at Jim and Nick's for Jim and Nick's Barbecue at the Auburn football games last year. And, I mean, yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. Not at all. Um, what did family and friends first say when they found out y'all were dating someone outside of your race? My family really accepted it. They really didn't have anything to say about it. Um, you know, as long as I'm happy. That's what they said. And my, uh, since my parents are in a racial couple, they kind of just accepted it and knew kind of what we were getting into. So it's good. It is proven to be true that anyone over the age of 65 is less likely to approve of interracial relationships. Has this been the case for you? Um, not for me, just because since my parents are in an interracial relationship, my grandparents, who are all over the age of 65, kind of already gone through the whole like learning to accept it thing, so they've kind of just grown accustomed to it, and it doesn't really bother them anymore. I don't think anybody of that age now. Mm -hmm. no. The child of dual heritage is not likely to have an equal exposure to both of their cultural heritages. <laughs> How do you plan on raising your children? Do you plan to mix the different cultures evenly, or do you plan on letting your children decide on choosing which culture they feel they fit best in? Um, 
well, we kind of talked about it, and, you know, I don't have a problem with them leaning towards one or the other culture as long as they decide not to portray negative stereotypes that, you know, would be damaging to either their race or our family, just as long as they're still respectful of other people. It doesn't really matter to me which one they go more towards, but we're definitely going to make an effort to let them choose and give up more balanced <laughs> um, experience for them. Okay. Interracial marriages have a 41% chance of separating after 10 years together, while there's a 31% chance of separation among same-race couples. Knowing these statistics, what do you think is the cause of the separation? Do you think it has to do with race or other factors? Um, I think that some of the main reasons would be um, maybe some problems with possibly like with kids. Um, you know, just dealing with the the hardships and the difficulties of being in a relation inner racial relationship. You know, and having kids. Um, um, but as a whole, I don't think that that would be a major disagreement. Yeah, it's more the pressure that the outside world puts on you being in an interracial relationship that kind of puts a strain on you rather than we don't have a problem with us being interracial. It's more what outside forces do that can kind of adhere to causing those sort of problems. There are many scholars who have researched economic class in interracial couples. Statistically, interracial couples marry outside of their social class. Status exchange theory argues that black versus white unions are frequently formed through an exchange relationship in which the both white and black partners benefit by trading status characteristics. Is this true in your case? Do you think it has to do with geographic location, common interests, or simply because y'all are attracted to one another? I think I would definitely say because we were attracted to one another. I don't think it was anything else. Yeah, we didn't really... We kind of, we both kind of make the same amount of money, um, we're kind of in the same situation, so kind of just merged together, and it was just, you know, you know, physical first, and then, yeah, just, it doesn't really have anything to do with what we came from one another, kind of just what we have together that keeps us going. 96% of African Americans are okay with interracial marriages compared to 84% of whites, according to the latest census data. Is this true in y'all's family? Are you okay with being in a rela- Are they okay with y'all being in a relationship with each other? My family uh, was definitely accepting of it. Um, they were, um, let's say, uncomfortable or shocked, but you know, it was just kind of a not what they expected, I guess you could say, but they were definitely accepting of it. Yeah, it's always, it's never like a bad thing, but it's all, people usually expect you to be in a relationship with someone of your own race, and so when you, when you, you, you know, break the news that you're not, it's not looked down upon, but it does take a second to kind of readjust and be like, okay, well, that's your life now, and that's fine, so... In the U.S., 87% approve. Oh, sorry. Just read that. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> okay. Because different races have different social norms and social languages, was that difficult for either one of y'all to adjust to? Are there still things that confuse you about the African American culture or Caucasian culture, or are you relatively familiar with both the norms? Um, I wouldn't say it was really the culture. There's definitely things that Justin's family does that. I haven't been used to, but I think that's more his, just his familial culture, not really being Caucasian, and also, you know, a geographical thing, since I'm from up north and he's from the south, there's just different things that we had to get used to about each other, and luckily, neither of us are really too extreme on either part of our stereotypical culture, so we've just been able to kind of adjust to what each of us does and just go on from there. I agree. (laughs) All right. Well, what would your advice be to couples who are thinking or just entering into an interracial relationship? Um, I would be, um, I mean, just 
prepared to be ridiculed, you know, made fun of, um, you know, uh, I believe, you know, as long as you love that person and they love you back, I mean, you know, it's, you really don't want to listen to what the world says, but, you know, who you love is who you love. Yeah, it's definitely, you gotta make sure you got some thick skin and get ready for there will be people that don't really understand or don't really accept you, but as long as you think your relationship is worth it, you'll be able to work through it. Luckily, our situation has been very accepting from our family, so we haven't had to deal with that, but there will be situations where you're looked at funny or someone makes a slight comment and your kids might be made fun of, but as long as you guys love each other, you can work through it together and make sure you're the stronger force when dealing with those people. All right, thank you guys.